All right, so here is class 16, where we're going to do ductile static failure um, uh, theories uh, summary. All right, so um, we're going to talk about the failure of ductile materials, and we'll do some more practice. Uh, I think in this video, I'm going to do an example as well as my summary here. All right, so uh, here is um, the summary. Now, let me, let me, can I make myself smaller? I'll make myself very small. There I am. Okay. And I'll talk like um, the uh, beetle just said, hey, my ass, very small. All right, so um, we have these two fail competing theories, maximum shear stress theory and distortion energy theory. So we might as well like compare and contrast them. Um, so maximum shear stress theory is sometimes known as Tresca, it's also known as Guest. All right. uh, distortion energy theory, um, remember these as von Mises stress, also AKA octahedral shear. That comes up sometimes in some FEA, instead of saying von Mises, they'll call it octahedral stress or something along those lines. Um, safety factor, right? Things that we want to know. And the safety factor for maximum shear stress theory is taking the shear yield strength and dividing it by the uh, maximum shear in the body, or the absolute maximum shear, we should say. And because we're giving a common treatment between um, both our stress, little doohickey, whatever we're calculating, and the strength test, we modify the strength test to get its absolute maximum uh, shear, which turns out to be one half of the yield strength. And in the, the safety factor for distortion injury theory is simply the yield strength divided by von Mises stress. And why is that? Because we've actually converted our stress state into something that's pretty much equivalent. Sometimes we'll even say the effective stress. That's also another name for it. It's another AKA. I could have put that in there too. Sometimes we call the distortion energy theory stress the effective stress. And so, because we, we've converted our stress state into something that is nearly as equivalent as we can make it to the, uh, the what happens in the pull test. Um, in the maximum shear stress theory, as we've ma mentioned, the ma we predict that the shear strength is half of the normal strength, normal yield strength. In von Mises, aka distortion energy theory, it actually turns out to be 0.577. That's really, that's because it's the one divided by the square root of three. We'll see where that comes from in a second. We'll see the equation where that comes from to remind us. But it's a little compare and contrast. Um, something I also wanted to point out, let's see, uh, let's try to get this down here and maybe I can, in, this situation, if you have pure shear, right? If you were to uh, plot a shear uh, um, more circle, there you go, here's shear right there on all the faces, no other, so it's just pure shear. You'd find a point like right here and a point like right there, right? So you do your more circle and it looks like this. So you're gonna have a sigma A right here that's in tension and a sigma B that's gonna be the identical value but in compression. So if you were to plot it on the stress, uh, on this failure loci, it would be a 45 degree angle. Makes sense, right? Because they're gonna have equal magnitudes, one's positive and one's negative. So what we're really seeing here is sort of a measure of the gap that's right in there, right? Because that's the difference right here between the shear yield strengths. Because right? this is a plot of the yield strength itself, right? So of the normal stress yield strength. Um, okay, so if we wanna find the maximum shear stress, uh, uh, the stress to use with the maximum shear stress theory, and, and this is the case for a biaxial uh, uh, stress state, um, we can use this equation. Generally speaking, I like to go more circle because you could have a 3D more circle situation and you might have the absolute maximum shear might be the big one, right? So you might have, if you have a scenario right here where this thing does not cross over, right? The, 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 the plots that you plot over right here, then the absolute maximum is actually gonna be sigma A divided by two, right there, right there. So that's sigma A, and we wanna get the absolute maximum. So we wanna be cautious not to just jump in and use this equation. You could, but you might be wrong, right? Um, and for von Mises, though, if we have a bioxial state, we have a nice equation that works very well for us. And the only reason why I'm including this other one is because eh, it, it, you might want to have an equation for it too, but you gotta be careful. You, you really should draw more circle. 
um, for the uniaxial stress. Now, actually, we can pretty much predict all the time that this is going to be the absolute maximum shear. How do we know that? Because in a uniaxial case, one of them is going to be on the uh, on the axis right there. So we are going to cross over. So the radius of this right here is going to be the absolute maximum at the top. So this is the this is going to be the radius right there every time. Um, if I were to you know uh, I don't know why I picked that dark red right there. Let's go for blue. Maybe it will make a separate video, but we could see right there that's going to be sigma x in this case. You know it could be sigma y. As long as there's only one normal stress, that's the one. That's that's the the leg of it, and then the other leg is going to be this guy right here, right? So that's going to be that leg, and so that's going to be the radius, and therefore, boom. That means that's got to be the absolute maximum. Um, but now in distortion injury theory, we have a nice thing where, it, okay, in this case we have no, we have nothing in the y direction or in the the, the non, it's uniaxial, so the non-axial direction right there. Um, so in this case that would be y, that goes to zero and that goes to zero. So we could see that we have this very nice short equation for von Mises stress, and it's the one you probably will remember the most most likely. Um, making sure that it's only applicable to the uniaxial condition, um, but that is a very, very common uh, condition. We also see that that three shows up. That's where the square root of three, one over the square root of three will pop up there when trying to uh, uh, make that, so make a comparison to the pure uh, shear um, scenario. Um, so the advantage of the maximum shear stress theory is it's conservative, right? So you're being actually a little bit extra cautious in um, your prediction. Um, we'll always have a safety factor that is lower when we're evaluating something with the maximum shear stress theory. Um, but uh, we also have the, the benefit in distortion energy theory of being more accurate, generally speaking. Right, if um, with a nice homogeneous uh, and um, uh, I'm trying to think of the correct word for same properties in every direction, um, uh, material, uh, ductile material, it's pretty darn good distortion energy theory. Um, so it's got a bit of an accurate, but you could still see from these little uh, these little data points, sample data points, some fell inside, but then but also if there's a data point here, that means the thing failed. So accuracy versus, you know, being careful, well, it's important, right? Um, you know, like if, you, if something is a high precision piece of equipment um, and, and you, you want to make sure that like you, you don't want to use too much material, make the thing weigh too much, or you might, might make the thing cost too much if you're too conservative, you don't necessarily want to double down on being conservative because we're already going to apply a design factor. Um, which is going to take care of some things. But being cautious is sometimes the best way to go. Uh, let me see how long um, this video was. And it's eight minutes, so I'm going to make my um, example a separate video. So this was my uh, just summary overview, and then I'll do another, I'll do an example.